Hi, I'm Dala, and today we're gonna find out why this leaf doesn't have any heat. Let's get started. Okay, so let's verify the customer complaint. So customer states that there's no heat in this vehicle, and if we open the energy information, there's a quick test we can run here. So I'm gonna switch to uh, auto mode, uh, put on lots of heat, and also put the fan on high. Uh, then we can inspect how much power the climate control is drawing. Should be like three or four kilowatts, but we're getting nothing. So yeah, there's something wrong with it. I then uh, check the codes here using LeafSpy, and we have uh, three fault codes active. B2777, uh, 77A and 77B. And these all point towards the PTC heater. So next step is to replace that. Okay, this is Dala from the future. Uh, I didn't know back then that these three codes doesn't always necessarily indicate that you have a bad PTC heater, but um, since it's the easiest part to start with um, and so commonly fails, it just makes sense to start by looking at it. So, yeah. Okay, so the customer planned ahead and actually brought a known working PTC heater with the car. And as soon as you have a problem with these ones on the early leaf, uh, it doesn't make sense to check the fuse or anything. Um, that's also a common failure point. It's best to first replace this one and um, yeah, then reassess the situation and um, see if it, the vehicle started to work right away or if you need to look at some fuses also. So um, let's go through the process of replacing this. Actually, before we uh, check, chuck this one into the car, there's a quick test that you can do. Um, so I have the multimeter set to uh, continuity mode. So now I now can see that it, it gets a reading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the negative lead here on the outside, which is like the chassis ground. And then I'm going to, uh, with the other probe, I'm going to probe both the positive and the negative side. And you should have a, now I'm touching it, there is no connection. Now I'm going to go to the other side. No, I'm touching. There is no connection. So that's a like quick test you can do in order to verify that this one isn't at least shorted uh, to ground. Yeah, let's continue.
Okay, so next step is to remove the high voltage connector. It's located here. There's a blue tab. Snap. That you push up. And then you have to depress some plastic bits. That's the high voltage one. And then there's a communication one. I think I'm gonna have to move the camera out. Okay, so next step, I'm gonna remove these uh, coolant hoses. And there are, there's one here going to the PTC. And if we check underneath the car, where the drain is, um, that is here. There is also one uh, coolant hose that I'm gonna remove. But I'm not gonna make the same mistake as last time. So I'm not gonna have the camera on the underside this time. So I will just skip ahead. Okay, so now I'm gonna go underneath the car and I'm gonna slide this one uh, backwards and then lift it out. Uh, sorry for the camera angle, but uh, yeah, there's not really gonna be any easy way to to show you what's going on down there. And I just realized that I have one of these coolant hoses I still need to unhook, so I wanna do that. Woo! It's free! I don't really know how to film this, but I'm gonna try to pull it out. I'm gonna just take the splashy like this and I'm gonna snake it out of there. Okay, let's see if we can get it out. We did it! It's out. Okay, so here we have the two PTC heaters side by side. Uh, this is the new one and this is the old one. And we're actually gonna be doing a downgrade today because uh, the old one is stamped uh, 5 kilowatt software version 2.5 and the new one is uh, 4 kilowatt uh, software version 2.5. So we're gonna have one kilowatt of heating power less. But this is totally fine. Uh, the previous one I did was an upgrade, so it went from, I think it went from three to five kilowatt. But yeah, that's perfectly fine. So now I will do all these steps in reverse order. I'm not sure if I'm gonna bother showing you. I think we'll just cut to this one being installed. Ta-da, it's back in. Uh, now I'm gonna reconnect the high voltage lines and throw in the 12 volt battery and Put some coolant in it and let's run start it. Okay, let's see. Did it work? Put on some heat, some fan. <sighs> okay, so it's the next day and I've been thinking a bit and looking at those three error codes. Um, they all seem to point towards some issue with the communication between the AC amp and the PTC resistor itself. I tried to search the forums, but there were not a lot of posts about these particular codes. And the uh, full service manual suggests to investi investigate the wiring, which I've checked. And the next step is to replace the AC auto amp and see if uh, yeah, the communication starts to work. It's a uh, uh, LIN, uh, lean-based uh, communication. Uh, it's not CAN or something. Uh, so I'm not super familiar with LIN, so I would love to just take out the scope and start to look at this. But uh, I'm under a time pressure also, like the customer is visiting here and wants his car back as soon as possible. So I'm not gonna be tearing down and checking the fuse because it's not throwing any like error code related to the fuse. Uh, it's a common failure point, but I don't think the fuse has failed here. So I'm gonna hand this back to the customer and they are gonna uh, try to replace the AC amp uh, themselves. It should be fairly simple to do. So that's the module that communicates with the rest of the AC slash heating system. So a bit of an inconclusive video, but um, I hope you at least um, enjoyed watching me struggle a bit with the early leaves. They have a lot of common faults. So yeah, see you in the next one.
Bye.